Happy Friday, everybody. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean. And I am here today to guide you through your awesome, amazing mind-body connection. There's a new moon coming this weekend. It's Friday the 13th today. So we're going to do a salutation to the moon to just bring in all of that awesome energy. That was weird. Yep, and we'll also do a little salutation to the sun. So our salutations today are going to, hi Uncle Buddy, be inspired by the Intermediate Bikram series, but don't let that be daunting to you. It doesn't matter if you've never practiced Bikram before. We're just doing a little intro. Fred's excited, Uncle Buck is excited. You have two minutes. We're gonna actually start off on the back of our mats in an extended child's pose today. So gather uh, any props if you feel like you might need them. Get some water handy, take a couple sips before we get started. Give some snacks to all of the people or pets that might interrupt your practice so that you can enjoy yourself for today's class. Step into the other room and set this timer. Beautiful. Grab some water for myself. Awesome. I don't know if anyone else is a smart watch wearer. I am very into tracking my sleep, tracking my steps, uh, and lately just really checking out my heart rate while I'm exercising for all forms of exercise, especially yoga. One of my favorite parts about using a smart watch during yoga is just noticing afterwards how low my heart rate gets, how much you can really change the way that you're feeling inside, how much stress that you have, simply by just starting to quiet your mind, slowing down your breath. So if you, like me, have a smartwatch and you can track your workout, let's go ahead and get that started right now. And let's come to the back of the mat towel. I'm gonna go ahead, open my knees nice and wide, set my hips back to my heels. You can either open your knees wide or keep them together. Still send your hips back towards your heels. Take some time and, and some breaths to slowly melt down towards the floor into your child's pose. And take a couple moments as you come into this stretch as you're here to just notice how your body is feeling today. So frequently, especially when a class first starts, I'll come into a stretch and I'll be like, that feels great. And then I really do a total scan from head to toe and I realize, hey, I'm squeezing my shoulders more than I need to. Or, you know what? I bet if I use my breath, I can exhale a little bit closer towards my heels, find a little more length in my spine. 
So take a moment right now to evaluate your body. If it feels good, if your shoulders feel good, maybe walking your hands a little farther forward, even pressing those hands, palms into the floor to create more activation throughout your back. If your shoulders are feeling tired, feel free to bend those elbows as generously as you want to. Maybe even bringing your hands all the way back towards your heels like a beautiful tadpole. That way you can allow those shoulder blades to fall open a little bit more. Create, oh, I'll step in on my hands. Create a little bit more of a stretch through your back. Let's take three more breaths right here. that next exhale pull yourself up let's come into tabletop adjust yourself get your hands palms right underneath of your shoulders and your hips underneath or on top of your knees pardon me open those fingers nice and wide like a starfish and then as you're here check out what's happening once again with your shoulders and what's happening with your back it's normal to come into this tabletop and just really relax but I want you to take a moment here and engage so instead of shoulders as earrings and shoulder blades um, collapsing towards each other, pressing into the hand palms, to find a little bit more activation in that upper body. Instead of having that big dip in that back, pulling your core in to find some length in your spine, some straightness, and then coming back to your shoulders, can you even stretch more of the crown of your head towards the room in front of you? And find some stability by pressing the tops of your feet into the floor. And then you'll feel your glutes slightly engage as well. So here we are nice and engaged in our tabletop. Go ahead, keep your left hand down on the floor. Take a deep inhale, send that right arm up towards the ceiling. Look up towards it. Take one more inhale up here and exhale, send your right arm underneath of your body to the left side and gently relax and release your right ear down to the mat. We're gonna go ahead and walk our left hand forward as much as possible. Go ahead and tent those fingers on the floor and still use your breath to find a little extra stretch of hips towards your heels. So we've got a little bit of a combo right here between a child's pose or with the hips lifted, a little more like a puppy pose, and this nice big shoulder stretch as well. If this is not honoring your body today, having your left hand extended, you can go ahead and walk that left hand back in, bringing it underneath of your shoulder for some support. Wherever you are, take two more big breaths right here. And then if you have that hand extended, go ahead, walk your left hand back in under your chest, place it on the floor, start to squeeze the back, engaging, inhale, right arm all the way up towards the ceiling and exhale back down to the floor. Take a couple moments right here in some cat-cow. Come again to the attention of a little bit of pressure of the tops of your feet on the floor to make sure that you are finding some engagement through those glutes. And work on moving here with intention of continuing to create those nice long lines, that space that we worked at in our active tabletop. with some traditional cat cow right here but really work to use your chin your eyes where your eyes go your body follows to look up towards the ceiling to find as much range of motion so really looking towards your chest your belly button and cat and really looking up even just towards your eyebrows and cow one more time in each direction
and then come back into your active tabletop. So pressing into those hands, palms, spreading those fingers nice and wide like starfish. Elbow creases can even start to shine forward towards uh, the front of the, the room, particularly if you, like me, have these delightful overextending elbows. All right, this time, opposite side of we're working together, you're now going to keep your right hand on the mat. Make sure that you didn't sink into those shoulders. So press actively into that right hand palm. Inhale your left arm up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, thread your left arm underneath of the right. Bring your left ear, left temple to the mat. Start to walk your right hand forward. Use a couple of your next exhales to stretch those hips a little closer towards your heels. Find a little bit more stretch through your extended arm in front of you. And just work to relax as much as possible into this nice big shoulder stretch, hitting both shoulders at the same time. But if hitting this uh, stretch in the right shoulder doesn't feel good for you, you can walk it back in and activate your hand palm in the floor still feeling shoulder blades engaged. If you still have your right hand extended, go ahead and walk it back in underneath of your shoulder. Press into it, take a deep inhale. Send your left arm all the way up towards the ceiling and then exhale your left hand back down towards the floor. Great work, everyone. Let's come back into cat cow again right here. This time I want you to feel free to shake your tail, shake your shoulders, find a little bit more of the move that feels good for you. We're gonna stretch out our calves next, bring in a little bit of a side twist, just really working to warm up that body as much as possible and then we'll stand up, do our salute to the sun, a salute to the moon, and come back down to the floor. All right. Once again, make sure those hands, palms are underneath of your shoulders and we're not sinking into those shoulders. You have your core engaged, your belly is tight. Keep your left knee down on the floor and go ahead, extend your right leg back behind you. We've been doing this one before. I know we didn't do any warm up for our hands today though. So you might feel a little bit more pressure in your hands, especially if you've been hunched over typing at the computer or doing a lot more texting with your phone. Super normal. As we're here right now, you don't just have your right leg extended behind you. It's not just hanging out. You're pressing the ball of the foot into the floor. You're doing your best to stack your heel over the ball of the foot, stretching through the heel, squeezing your glute, activating that leg, drawing that belly in. Go ahead, take a nice deep inhale, lift your right leg up, cross it over the left. Plant it back down on the floor or in your dog's bed if that happens to be there. And then we're gonna turn and look towards that foot that we just crossed over, looking over the opposite shoulder. If you're mirroring me, we're looking over our left shoulder right now. And change. Head back to neutral, inhale your right foot back up. Go ahead, bring that knee in. Take a moment, send your hips back towards your heels. This time a nice closed leg child's pose if you went for open leg before. Back to your breath. Think about slowing your exhale down a little bit more than your inhale, especially if you feel your heart rate is raising. Encourage the back of your rib cage to expand with each breath. Take one more right here. And on your exhale, pull yourself back up to tabletop. Walk those hands in a little bit closer. Spread your fingers nice and wide. This time we're going to keep our right knee, top of the right foot planted, and extend your left leg out behind you. Tuck your toes under. Get the ball of the foot onto the floor. Stack your heel on top of the ball as if you're trying to stretch your heel towards the wall behind you, but instead of finding that extra stretch in your foot, it's staying perpendicular to the floor. Good stuff. 
squeezing your glutes, feeling the quads, hamstrings, the whole leg is really activating. Pulling that belly in nice and tight. Squeezing shoulder blades together here, activating that upper body. Maybe even feeling it a little in the chest. Take a deep inhale, lift up that left leg, cross it over your right, tap those toes back down. One more big inhale, exhale, turn and look over that right shoulder. Maybe you're just looking at a spot on the floor. Maybe you can twist so much that you actually see your heel. Keep extending through that left leg as well for three, two, one. Awesome, go ahead, bring your opposite knee in. Let's go ahead and walk our hands forward. Bring your pubic mound down towards the floor. You can open your feet a little bit wider. Take a moment right here, looking up towards the ceiling in a seal pose. Then go ahead, tuck your toes under. Send your hips up towards the ceiling. You can walk your feet in a little bit closer. We'll come into down dog. I'm gonna come onto my knees for just a second. You know, I like to say nothing says cool like tucking your t-shirt into your leggings. But this way, everyone can feel great about themselves. All right, so we're sending those hips up towards the ceiling. We're taking a moment in down dog. I want you to find the stretch that feels right for you. Feel free to look at me for just a moment. I'd like to take a moment to address things to try not to do here in down dog. So in down dog, we're not working to keep our elbows our shoulders on top of our hands palms there's a real stretch of your hips towards the back of the room as if i'm pulling your hips all the way towards the back of the mat which then brings your ears in line with your arms if this is uncomfortable for you walk those feet in a little bit closer take a big generous bend of your knees and you can even have your bellies on your thighs right here so your glutes are opening up, expanding towards the outside of the room. You can even think of your inner thighs as spiraling towards the back of the room to get a little bit more of a lift of those hips. And then from here, with that nice long line that you've created from your hips all the way through your arms, we're just gonna move one foot and then the other. You can pedal your heels. You can shift from side to side. Just creating the stretch that feels right for you. We'll hang out here for just three more breaths. I really love to bring the weight forward and then send my hips back towards my heels. Just to practice a little bit of a iteration between a quasi plank, a bad plank form, let's be real, and then this down dog. Just to work to strengthen those shoulders a little. All right, go ahead walk your feet up to your hands your hands up to your feet and then take that generous bend again big bend in your knees way better to take a big bend in your knees and sandwich your belly on your thighs than it is to have straight legs and a lot of rounding in this upper back this is not comfortable this puts a lot of strain on that lower back so bend those knees create that tabletop for yourself for your belly this is one of those opportunities when, if you have a big belly, it actually makes the posture a little bit easier because it's easier for you to create that table with your legs. All right, if your back is feeling good, if your legs are feeling good, keep this connection, this sandwiching of upper and lower body and send those hips gently up towards the ceiling. If you cannot reach your hands to the floor, that's okay. You can grab hold of your opposite elbow, maybe even relaxing your hands on your shins. Just find what feels good for you today. Take a moment here, shake your head left and right and up and down, nice and slow. Beautiful. And when you're ready, slowly, gently roll yourself up to the top. Here we'll take a deep inhale, bring those arms up overhead, palms together. Exhale, relax your arms down by your side. Take a moment right here in mountain pose. All right, we're gonna move really slowly through this salute to the sun. Beautiful. 
All right, so bringing your feet closer together, I like to even have my heels, toes touching each other. You might find that that makes it challenging to bring your thighs together if you have some quality thighs like I know I do. So in that instance, I like to take a bend of my knees, bring my inner thighs together, and then close them a bit like a book. All right, so plenty of weight in your heels so you can press through your legs and get some engagement of your thighs. In Bikram, we usually use the term locking the knee, but I don't want you to jam your knee back. That is not healthy. Better to take a slight bend in your knees and really just apply some pressure to the floor just to wake everything up, just to notice your body today. All right, so bringing our hands, palms together, we're going to take a deep inhale, stretch our arms up overhead. I'll allow you, and you should, take a big exhale here. On your next inhale, keep your heels grounded, squeeze your glutes, hips come forward, stretch your eyes, nose, chin, and sternum up towards the ceiling. Start to look towards the wall behind you with your eyes, or just start tracing a line on the ceiling with your eyes. And if you see it with your eyes, reach up, extend your hands back, biceps come closer to your ears, and try and touch it with your hands. But keep your hips stacked the best you can on top of your heels, so we're not leaning towards the back of the room with our upper body. Hips and glutes are squeezed forward. Every inhale lifts our chest. Every exhale, bring those arms back a little bit more. Practice one more time. Keep your shoulders from your ears. Take a deep inhale. Lift up, chest sternum touches the ceiling. And on your exhale, eyes go back as you lean back. More back. Way back. Inhale, breathing. Come up. Bring your chin back to neutral. And exhale, we're going to swan dive or fold forward. And bring your fingers in line with your toes on the side. And you can bend your knees as much as you need to. Maybe you're just reaching today because the floor feels very far away. And that's totally okay as well. Relax your head down to the floor. The goal is to keep your um, toes down. It's okay if your heels come up for this one. All right, so we're gonna bend our knees as much as you can now and bring your heels towards the floor. Keep your eyes down towards the floor in front of you. You're going to step your right foot back into a plank and then look up towards whatever's in front of you, palms planted, send your left foot back to meet with your right. Bend your elbows by your side, coming down into as best of a chaturanga as you can. And inhale, press yourself back up. We're still looking forward with your eyes. We're gonna move uh, in the opposite direction to come back out. So bringing that left foot forward, bringing your head back down, bringing your right foot forward to meet it. Take that generous bend of your knees. Send your hips up towards the ceiling. Inhale, bring those arms up overhead, palms together. One more big inhale, stretch up, reach those arms back, take that back bend, and exhale back to center, hands back to heart center. Let's do it one more time, nice and slow. This time we'll send the opposite leg back behind us first. So heels, toes are still touching each other, hands, palms together, we'll get to move a little bit faster this time. Inhale, stretch up towards the ceiling, exhale, come into a little mini back bend. Inhale, back up towards the ceiling. Exhale, belly in, hinge forward at the hips. Go ahead, bring those fingers in line with your toes, starting with those straight legs. Then we're gonna bend our knees as much as possible. Work to keep your heels on the floor if you can. Step back with your opposite foot first. So left foot comes back, eyes come up in front of us, look towards whatever's in front of you. Send your opposite leg back behind it, meet in plank. Keep your arms braced by your side, bend of the elbows, your version of chaturanga. Press yourself back up from the chaturanga. Step one foot in, step the other to need it. Bend those knees, fingertips in line with the tops of your toes. Send your hips up towards the ceiling. Inhale, stretch yourself up, bring those hands, palms together. Lift up from the chest, weight in your heels, come into your back bend. Stand back up to center, 
pull your hands down to heart center. Let's do that one more time each side, and then we will do our half moon in which we're gonna add a little triangle and a standing separate leg, head to knee. All right, so hands palms together. Take a deep inhale, send your arms up. Exhale, come into your back bend. Inhale, back up to center. Exhale, belly in tight, hinge forward. Fingers come in line with your toes. Straight legs to begin with. Exhale, bend those knees nice and deep. Go ahead, send your right leg back. Lift your eyes up, look forward in front of you. Plant your hands a little more. Send your left leg back to meet with the right. Squeeze those elbows in close by your sides. A push up. Inhale, press yourself back up. Step that left foot forward. Bring that right foot to meet it. Oh my. Take that generous bend of your knees. Send your hips up towards the ceiling. Head releases down towards the floor. Inhale, roll yourself up. Bring those hands, palms together atop your head. Thumbs cross, eyes up towards the ceiling. Stretch up. Go for that mini back bend. Weight in your heels. Squeeze your glutes, hips forward. Lift yourself up. Bring your hands back down to heart center. Inhale, stretch up towards the ceiling. Exhale, mini back bend. Inhale, back up, nice straight line. Exhale, belly in tight, hinge forward. Bringing those fingers in line with your toes. Bend your knees as much as you need to. This time, step your opposite foot back first. Left foot goes back. Eyes look up. Right foot comes and meets with the left. Go ahead, bend those elbows, chaturanga. Press yourself up. Bring your right foot back in, eyes down to the floor. Step your left foot to meet with the right, bend those knees. Hips up towards the ceiling, straighten your legs. Inhale, stretch all the way up, bring those hands, palms together. Stretch up from your waist, little mini back bend. Back to center, straight line. Hands come down to heart center. Take a moment, let's relax those arms down by your side. Just right here in mountain pose. Open up that chest, squeeze those shoulder blades together, maybe even hands, palms, already starting to face forward towards the front of the room. Because next up we've got half moon hands to feet. Take this time right now to slow down your breath. I know that my heart rate increased right there during our flow, super normal. We're just taking this time between postures to use our breath, to use our relaxed, focused mind to come back to that same just feeling of relaxation, to that awareness of what's happening in our bodies as we started to create when class began. So finding one spot to focus your eyes will help you to relax your mind, to slow down that heart rate, to relax your breath, to extend your exhale and to be here in this moment right now. I'm gonna to turn to face you for those who need to watch uh, instead of just hearing the words. All right, so here we are. Next up is half moon, hands to feet pose with that triangle and um, standing separately, head to knee. So palms facing forward, heels, toes touching each other. Once again, bring the weight into your heels. Open up your chest, squeeze those shoulder blades together, pull your belly in and find some engagement of your thighs. Take a deep inhale, bring those arms up overhead. Go ahead, interlace your fingers, release your index fingers, thumbs crossed, and keep that nice tight grip. So I have some delightful Charlie's Angels hands right here. Beautiful, relax those shoulders away from your ears, keep the weight in your heels, take a deep inhale, stretch. Up and on your exhale, slowly, gently come on down to the right. Inhale, back up to center, hips forward, open up that chest, upper body back again. Stretch up from your waist, take a deep inhale, and on your exhale, slowly come down to the left. Inhale, back up to center. We've got another back bend coming. Keep the weight in your heels, squeeze your glutes, hips forward, stretch your eyes, nose, chin up to the ceiling. Lift your chest sternum, take a deep inhale, and on your exhale, bring those arms back. Inhale, lift yourself back up to center. We're gonna rain forward to the floor in front of us. 
coming right into our forward fold right here. Take one more breath, and then a big inhale. We're gonna lift ourselves up, arms come up overhead, and on your exhale, step that right foot out to the right. As your right foot steps out to the right, we're going to turn our toes towards the right side as well. Bend your knee and bring your right hand fingertips down towards the floor. Left hand stretches up towards the ceiling, coming into a nice extended side angle, or as Bikram calls it, triangle. Go ahead, inhale, lift yourself up. Keep those feet separate. Turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out. As we bend our left knee to come into that warrior two position, flip your arms and bring your left hand down towards the floor. Right hand stretches up towards the ceiling. Go ahead and inhale back up to center. Both arms come up overhead. We're gonna turn both of our toes over towards the right side of the room. Twist your hips a couple times. Work to get your two hips in one line. Take a deep inhale, lift up, and on your exhale, we're going to roll down one vertebrae at a time, working to bring your forehead towards your knee. Take a deep inhale, lift yourself back up. Come through to center, twist towards the opposite side. Bring that hip forward one, two, three, four, five times. Make sure you're not rounding forward in your chest. Open that chest, squeeze shoulder blades together. Take a deep inhale, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest. Slowly, gently round down to the other side. You can separate your hands if you need to to work to bring that forehead a little closer towards your knee. Go ahead, take a deep inhale. Gently lift yourself back up. Turn back towards the center. Step your feet together, stepping that right foot in to meet with the left. Exhale, relax your arms down by your side. Great work. Let's do that same half moon hands to feet with our triangle and separate leg head to knee. One more time. Starting right here in mountain, turn your hands, palms forward. Bring the weight in your heels, pull your belly in. Engage your glutes, engage your quads, your hamstrings, your whole legs are working, rounding with the floor in front of you. We're gonna go for an opposite grip. So if you remember which thumb you had on top, put the other one on top. And if you don't remember, go for what feels natural and then switch. All right, inhale those arms up overhead, bring those hands palms together. Here's where our opposite grip comes into play. Opposite thumb on top, squeeze your glutes, hips forward. Take a deep inhale, stretch up from your waist and on your exhale, slowly, gently come down to the right, pushing your hips to the left. Inhale back up to center, hips forward, upper body back, glutes squeeze, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, slowly, gently come down to the left. Inhale back up to center, hips forward, take a deep inhale. Stretch your eyes, nose, chin up towards the ceiling, allow your head to fall back. And on your exhale, hips come forward as you slowly, gently, so much slow and gentleness come for your backward bend. Inhale back up to center, chin comes to neutral. Release your hands, come on, hinge forward down towards the floor. Relax and release your head down towards the floor. Awesome, inhale, lift yourself back up, bring those arms up overhead, palms come together. Take that big step out to the right. Go ahead, turn those toes to the right. We're gonna bend our knees, move our arms in three, two, one, everything happens at the same time. Awesome, coming into your triangle pose, turn your chin towards that left shoulder. Inhale, back up to center, extend the opposite toe to the opposite side of the room, bend your knee, find that movement with your arms as well. Turn your chin up towards your right hand palm. Look at all five of your beautiful fingers together. Inhale back up through center, bring those palms to face each other. Shift on your heels to the right side of the room, move that hip, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, round forward, bring your forehead to your knee. If you can get your forehead and your knee to touch, there's some great medical benefits of the compression right here for elimination and digestion. Inhale back up through center, pick up your toes, turn on your heels to the opposite side of the room. Move that hip, stretch up, belly tight, hinge forward. Make sure you're pulling that belly in still for those forward folds. Remember, you can separate your hand as much as you need to. 
Beautiful, slowly, gently lift yourself up. Turn towards the center, bring your arms down parallel to the floor. Keep your heels invisible behind your toes. We're gonna hinge forward. Bring all five fingers of both hands down to the floor in front of us. So maybe you even have your hand in front of where your shoulders are. I know usually we say weight in your heels, but for this one, I want you to have as much weight in your toes as possible. So instead of having your hips shift towards the back of the room, your hips are stacked directly on top of your heels, maybe even a little bit further forward. If you can't straighten your legs as much as I can, that's totally okay. I want you to first work on trying to straighten these legs as much as possible. If you do have your legs nice and straight, start to walk your hands in closer towards your feet, bringing your belly down towards your thighs. But just like we talked about before for that forward fold, that we're not straight legged, belly super far from thighs, creating all this extra space, all this extra tension, we are relaxing that belly towards our thighs. Big stretch on the back of the legs. Keep your right hand planted on the floor, just about at the center of your chest, or maybe a little further forward. Send that left arm up towards the ceiling. Squeeze those shoulder blades together, and then change. Bring your left hand down to the floor. Inhale, right arm up towards the ceiling. The standing separate leg stretch is one of my absolute favorites. I hope you love it too. Awesome, go ahead, bring those hands back down to center. If you're already really feeling this stretch on the back of the legs, you're just gonna stay right here. Maybe you even shake your glutes a little bit. Just gotta shake it out. And if you're not feeling it, I want you to turn your fingers towards the back of the room and start to walk your hands a little further between your legs, maybe even inching your fingers further and further forward. And then checking back in with that upper body, especially if you took this walk back with your hands to make sure you didn't bring that extra rounding in. You're still finding some relaxation. Just like when we were in down dog, I am opening up my glutes and starting to spiral my inner thighs towards the back of the room. Great work. All right, walk those hands palms back forward and walk your hands all the way over to that left leg. Maybe it feels good to take a static hold here. Maybe you wanna take a little bit of a swing with your upper body. We'll take two more breaths, however you're enjoying this stretch towards your left leg. Great, and then start to walk your hands all the way over to the right, either hanging out once again in this beautiful static stretch, or making things a little bit more dynamic, adding in this movement, this gentle little twist. Great work. All right, walk those hands back to center. Go ahead, step your right foot back in to meet with your left. Bring the weight back into your heels, slowly, gently inhale. Roll yourself all the way up. One more big stretch up towards the ceiling. Bring those arms up overhead. Keep both fingers up overhead. We're just gonna alternate a nice little row through on each side. So drawing your right arm down and back. Look towards your hand and elbow. Stretch back up towards the ceiling. Draw that left arm down and back. Using that breath. Inhale, hands come up. Exhale, come down. Go ahead, move at your own pace right here. Just giving you a couple extra breaths right here. Just a little bit more of a stretch into uh, that, that back. And into those shoulders as well. Make sure you get things equally on each side. So do one more on each side, and once you have finished, stretch both fingers up towards the ceiling, both hands, I should say. Thumbs towards the back of the room, pull your belly in nice and tight once more, relax your shoulders from your ears, ground your heels into the floor, stretch up from your waist on your inhale, exhale, rain those fingers down towards the floor. Go ahead and step your left leg back, Keep your 
left hand planted. If it's challenging for you to stay upright in this runner's lunge, go ahead and bring your knee down towards the floor. You can even be a little bit more active keeping those toes tucked or flattening them out. I'm gonna go for keeping my toes tucked. I'm gonna keep that left hand on the floor, extend your right arm up towards the ceiling. Beautiful, go ahead, bring that right hand back down. If you tucked your toes, untuck your toes, you might even wanna wiggle your foot out a little bit more towards the side. Truly brace the inside of your right leg with the outside of your right arm, press one in towards the other, and a little bit of a gentle shift forward. It's gonna create a beautiful stretch all throughout your thigh. Oh, it feels so good. Take two more breaths right here. And then we're gonna switch. If you want, you can extend your back leg and come back into that runner's lunge and switch through a plank. Or if you wanna take it a little easier on yourself, you can stay down here in tabletop and just switch your legs, bringing that right foot forward this time. Option once again, you can keep your foot down you can tuck that toe under. You can press yourself up into this runner's lunge. If you came into the runner's lunge, make sure your hips aren't to the ceiling. Let those hips sink forward. Keep your right hand planted. Extend your left arm up towards the ceiling, enjoying a nice little twist right here. Awesome. Float your left hand down to the floor. Go ahead, bring that right knee down. Once again, we're bracing the inside of our shin, our calf, with the outside of our arm. It might feel good to even wiggle that foot out just a little bit, hinging forward gently, creating that pressure of arm against leg. Really feel that throughout throughout all of my left leg, really in that hip crease as well. Awesome, option to once again get active, tucking your right toes under, lifting that knee up, coming into your runner's lunge and sending your uh, left leg back to meet it or just hanging out here on the floor, bringing your left leg back to meet with your right. Take another moment, send your hips back towards your heels. Let's take one more child's pose right here. One more opportunity to stretch through those arms towards the top of your mat. We had a lot of arms up overhead today. I know that can be a real challenge, especially if that's not something that's part of your regular practice. It can take lots of time to work up towards the strength and the stability of keeping those arms up overhead and the engagement of your body and the way that it requires you to engage your core a little bit differently, to balance differently with your arms up overhead while taking the break. Awesome, lift yourself up to tabletop. Go ahead, just shift onto your glutes. We're gonna send our legs out in front of us. Take a moment right here in your staff pose. For staff pose, for almost all straight leg poses, I love to bring my fingertips by my side and just gently walk one glute back and then the other. That helps to put a nice little uh, tilt in the hips so that you're hinging forward. Awesome for people with any sort of low back pain. However, if the back of your legs are really tight, if you have super tight hamstrings or calves, you might need to lift yourself up a little bit more and take a little bit of a bend in your knees here. Wherever you are, walk your hands forward. Again, trying to bring that belly towards your thighs. So better to stay nice and lifted here than it is to find once again that collapsing of our shoulders, that dumping of rounding forward. We're working to bring those bellies to our thighs coming forward, starting at least with that nice active walk forward. And then once your belly is on your thighs, if you would like to get a little bit more passive and roll yourself down, Awesome, but if you don't quite have your belly on your thighs yet, don't take that roll down so that you can stay as engaged as possible. Change, walk your hands back in. Keep your right leg extended. 
Bring your hands gently behind you. Cross your left leg over your right. Let's go ahead and inhale both arms up overhead. We're going to exhale and bring our right hand forward and our left hand behind us. Just coming into a nice, gentle little twist. Think truly about bringing this left shoulder back. Of squeezing that shoulder blade towards the right, keeping this big lift of your chest and really pulling your belly in tight. Change, inhale both arms back up towards the ceiling. Uncross your legs, challenging the core a little bit right here. And then cross to the opposite side. Find that big lift of your chest. Take a nice deep inhale, lift up, and then exhale. This time, right hand comes behind you. Left hand comes closer to your thighs. Pull that right shoulder back. Take two more breaths right here. And then change. Inhale back up through center. Uncross your legs. Exhale, relax those arms down by your side. Y'all are doing awesome. It's that magical time, it's time for our Savasana. So simply create some space for yourself on your mat. Go ahead, spread those legs as much as you want to, spread your arms as much as you want to, and commit to the next three minutes of complete stillness. Bring the same concentration to your Savasana as you did to every other posture that you did today. Just doing your best to eliminate the fidget, to focus on your breath, to be right here in this moment right now. I know we're coming close to the end of class, but this doesn't have to be the end of your focus inward on yourself. You made this time, so continue to enjoy it. Do your best not to let thoughts of other things that need to do or be done today crawl into your mind. If they do, that's okay. You can recognize them and let them know. I'll be with you in a couple minutes. This is my time right now. So important when we do create this time for ourselves, because a, a lot of days it truly is about creating time to work out so that we can feel good and allowing yourself to truly enjoy this time for what its purpose is. That way, when you're working, you don't have to always be thinking about working out. When you're working out, you don't always have to be thinking about working. Maybe you have five minutes, maybe you have 10 minutes, maybe you have one minute that you can find or create for this breath, for this you time. So important to truly enjoy this inward focus and to know that it is allowed, not just allowed, it is encouraged. You have to do these things that you know make you feel good. Because if you don't do them, or if you worry about it, if you feel guilty about creating this time, there's no joy there. So take pride. Take pride in knowing that your physical and mental health is of value. It is. It's only going to make you feel better. It might even make you look better. I know for me, it makes me a lot nicer. welcome to stay here in this final savasana for as long as feels good for you maybe even until you feel amazing 
If you'd like to close out class together, take a little wiggle of your fingers, of your toes. Feel free to keep your eyes closed. Move slowly with that intention and come to a seated position. Once you've found your way to the seated position of your choice, go ahead, bring your hands, palms to the center of your chest. Maybe you can feel your delightfully slow heartbeat. Take a moment, press your hands, palms together. Feel that back activate once more. Feel alive. Be here, be present. And thank yourself for creating this time and space, both mentally, physically, emotionally even, for yourself, for your day, for your yoga practice, for your life. Go ahead, bring your thumb to your third eye, to your drishti. Start to stretch those elbows up towards the ceiling. Lift your eyes up towards the sun. Continue to think good thoughts, speak good words, do good deeds, eat good foods, nourish yourself from the inside, and know that the light in me honors the light in you. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste. Thank y'all for coming. If you have any questions or concerns, as always, you know you can reach out.